Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and oh man, is it hard out there for an action figure collector. More choices than ever, more places to buy than ever, a greater range of price points than ever, more licenses, more options, more accessories, different scales, different aesthetic representations. Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Or does the gross surplus of product, the total lack of corporate focus, the chaotic international retail market, the inability to recognize a changing, scratch that, a changed marketplace by manufacturers mean that the action figure industry is broken, fractured into pieces so small that it cannot be repaired? It used to be a very simple transaction. Go to the store, pick out a figure, biff bang pal, done. Places that carried action figures stocked tons of them. If there was a particular figure you couldn't find, then you could go to a different store to see if they had that one in stock. If not, check back in a few weeks when they get restocked. Worst case scenario, a new batch of figures would be out in the next three to six months, and at that time, the whole line would get a restock, even if the packaging was refreshed, and you could probably pick it up then. Through the 80s and into the 90s, the action figure customer was clearly defined. Kids, up through like age 12-ish, maybe 14 for the cooler ones. In the United States, most kids usually start high school around age 15, and that's when, theoretically, the last remnants of childhood interests are abandoned in favor of cool kid things like backgammon, apple fights, and wrestling at the beach. Full disclosure, I wasn't a cool kid and I have no idea what they were doing. But the kids of the 80s and into the 90s didn't abandon action figures like the previous generations. Probably, and I'm just taking a guess here, because action figures had never been so totally radical and wicked awesome before. The real action figure boom began in the 70s with Star Wars and continued unabated to, well, like, today. As the 10 and 12 year olds of the 80s became the teens of the 90s, we, they, never walked away from their childhood heroes and the love of collecting. In response, action figures became more sophisticated, more detailed sculpting, more articulation, more accessories, more mature themes. An entire subculture, including magazines or blogs on paper, were published to feed the desire for news, reviews, and a look at what was coming out next. The average buyer was getting older and had money they wanted to spend on action figures. In the middle of all that, the worldwide computer web became accessible to the general population and I gotta say, while I've had some good times online, I've learned a lot, met a bunch of really cool people, I think we could use a do-over on the rollout of this whole thing. It has been a struggle, to say the least, for many of us around the world adapting to the too much information age. But that is when the whole thing went sideways. Sideways isn't necessarily a bad thing. Sideways doesn't necessarily mean broken. Sideways is the chaos of an outdated model applied on a scope and scale well beyond what it was capable of handling. Until the internet, markets were pretty well regulated by the agreements between countries. Hasbro didn't have to worry about any competition for selling Transformers because they had an exclusive license and any small-scale operation wouldn't have access to the retail environment where 99% of the purchases were made. There was a limited number of players in the game and only one method of acquiring product in person at the store. The internet took retail shopping global, it took selection global, it had no regard whatsoever for any of the exclusivity that had kept the traditional market stable. It meant that domestic manufacturers and retailers now had to compete with international pricing, international selection, and even the little guys who could make themselves look bigger than they actually were producing a product so niche, so niche, that it only served a handful of customers. Not to mention all the money that was going to buying back stuff that those teens of the 90s wanted to own again now that they were adults. Not to mention the flood of overseas counterfeit products into the market. The market responded by trying to serve everyone everywhere all at the same time with everything. It has been a struggle, to say the least, for many of us around the world adapting to the too much of everything age. I'm feeling so alive. 2018, the action figure industry is all over the place, for better and for worse. Local brick and mortar stores still stock product from time to time, and action figure collecting has become more mainstream, so more places than ever are stocking them from time to time. And there are thousands of websites where product is available with and without shipping costs, new product, old product. You can order single pieces or an entire wave months in advance. You can even order directly from the countries where product is being made, bypassing an entire leg of the old distribution system. This is a nightmare scenario for the companies still working with the old methods from the old system. They no longer have the control over the distribution line or even the means to attract the buyer's attention to the product in the first place. 
It used to be that they could just run a commercial during Saturday morning cartoons. Now it's like everybody's watching YouTube or Twitter. They're on their tablet or Xbox. And would you all just please pay attention? I have some tiny plastic people that I need to sell. And who was the customer in 2018 anyway? It's like everyone from four to 54. And while that might seem like a dream come true, it's more like a living nightmare. The action figure industry is no longer limited to a trip to the local store. It's pre-ordering, it's Kickstarters, it's international retailers, it's limited editions, it's convention exclusives, it's short-term, one-market, limited licensing deals with fixed expiration dates. It's trying to keep any brand, every brand, that has ever had any kind of fan base alive and viable as a collectible product. No one was asking for reanimator action figures, but here we are. The big companies still have their brand and region exclusivity and have made attempts to varying degrees of success and failure to serve every single type of collector within that region. 1 6 scale, 1 12 scale, 1 18 scale, quarter scale, life size, vintage style, modern style, movie style, comic style, 8 bit, black and white, brand crossovers. <laughs> Part of the defense against the influx of competitors into a previously exclusive market seems to be to flood that market with product, acquire more exclusive licenses, litigate against anyone trying to even skate near the intellectual property, and choke the oxygen out of any possible competitors. Collectors can't buy international product if they don't have any money left to spend, right? Retail stores aren't helping. Distribution in 2018 is a guessing game. It's a lottery at this point. Frequently, stores don't even know what they have in stock or when they're supposed to be stocking it. New releases happen so quickly, so frequently, that SKUs are commonly reused within a line, resulting in new product getting clearanced the moment it's released, and old product that was intended to be clearanced staying on store shelves as the months go by. And honestly, it doesn't seem like many retailers are even taking the adult consumer seriously. Adults feel weird being in the toy aisle. Parents feel weird having too many adults there. Stores don't stock to meet the adult demand. They don't pay attention when sh fig swappers are stealing merchandise from them. Would you let them return an old TV in a new box? And I'm gonna be honest here. While I know all of the stuff that I have trouble finding in stores can be purchased online, I don't think that's what the big companies want me doing. I am far too easily distracted and my interests are varied and diverse. I'll log on for a Marvel Legends, but I'll find my way to an indie brand or an import because once I'm online, it's all the same. If I gotta wait for it, might as well wait for something that isn't supposed to already be in stock down the street. There's always a chance that that Legends figure will show up next week or next month, and maybe I don't want it as much as I thought I did anyway. The best way to sell me a product is to make sure it's right in front of me. Don't make me work for it. Action figures are worth what the market will bear. The price point has crept up year after year. It goes up with innovations or demand for a popular license. The higher price normalizes over time, and then the quality begins to drop, but the price never follows. But parents can't keep dropping $20 a figure for kids. They smell. Not Some of them smell. <laughs> Baby smell. And very handsome adults that host YouTube shows and probably have lots of Wall Street financial investments can barely do that for themselves. None of this is healthy for the short or long term. growing market of international competitors, an increasingly unregulatable resale environment, total shameless disregard for intellectual property at all levels of the production and sale, original creations unable to even get noticed amidst the constant rearrangement and regurgitation of decades old brands, an oversaturation of product that prices out half the market and too often misses its intended audience as it sounds the same repetitive visual note as the hundreds of other products competing for attention. If that's not broken, then I don't know how you begin to fix it. Because yes, it's broken, but what broke was the old system. It's time for changes, time to rethink the way that the product goes from concept to delivery, time to rethink how customers learn about new products and access them, time to reconsider what the future of the market looks like, the future of an industry that we love, if it's not bringing in a younger fan base that is far more interested in digital media than it is in miniature physical manifestations of pop culture characters. Middlemen are dead, long live the supplier. The only reason I have to pay the same price on HasbroToyShop.com as I do in store at the brick and mortar place is because the brick and mortar place agrees to buy the product in advance and Hasbro agrees not to undercut their pricing. Hasbro has guaranteed sales, the retailer has guaranteed pricing. It is a mutually beneficial relationship to them. Both ends of the distribution chain need to address the dysfunctionality of the chain or abandon the chain. There is no difference between me not buying a product from them because I couldn't find it in person in a store versus going online to buy it from the manufacturer directly. The retailer lost the sale either way. 
incentivize pre-ordering and advanced sales. It's not enough to just guarantee me a figure. Give me a better price than what I could get if I wait for it to be in stock. The mutually beneficial relationship can transfer from retailer to consumer directly. Guaranteed sales for the manufacturer, more affordable pricing for the collector. Reissue popular merchandise. If you're not sure what's popular, see how well the knockoffs are doing. Hasbro left a lot of money on the table not reissuing Black Series Anakin, Boba Fett, Darth Maul, and f***ing Han and Carbonite. Why did it take so long to get standard stormtroopers back in the line? They pretty much opened the door themselves for international brands to pick up the slack. If we're sticking with regular brick and mortar retail, maybe it's time to put limits on the amount of product that can be purchased by a single customer. And for the love of tiny plastic people, recognize when product has been swapped in or make it non-returnable merchandise. Site to store is an option that frequently eliminates shipping charges. And depending on the timing, some retailers can even do two day shipping to the store again at no charge, they just throw it on the truck. But those sites need an option of acquiring more product when popular items are out of stock. Fewer items released each year in higher quantities would help. Site to store can make scalpers a thing of the past. Subscription services have pros and cons. It's nice to know you're going to get every figure that is released, but it's frustrating when the assortment includes things that you're not interested in and don't want to pay for. Offer more tiered choices and incentivize purchasing the entire line. Look, there's no easy fixes, and I've never been on the manufacturing end of this industry, so I don't even know how plausible any of these ideas are. It took a long time to get to this point, and there are a lot of variables at work. There's a lot of chaos, and most of the time it seems like a business that was put together by a bunch of kids who thought a supply chain would be more fun than a lemonade stand. But for collectors who want a shot at it all, who have all the retail tools they need right at their fingertips and can afford it, there's no better time to be alive than right now in no industry they would rather be in. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you are not already a subscriber. Thank you to those who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy. Please share this video. And a very big, very special thank you to everyone on our Patreon and the Action Figure subreddit for sharing your thoughts about this topic. I read every single response. Even if I wasn't able to respond to you directly, I attempted to, but holy cow, there were a lot of responses. Long, thought out, well-articulated, rational responses. I forgot I was on the internet for a few hours. It was wonderful. Yeah, it was pretty great. Cut.